Editing vertical videos on your phone is super convenient on the go, right? But it's hard to get that precision with, you know, your fingertips. That's why I prefer to edit my vertical videos in Premiere Pro because I just get more control. But if you're intimidated by Premiere Pro, you don't know where to start, don't worry, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. Let's jump on in. Right now I'm inside of Premiere Pro's vertical editing workspace. And all that means is that it puts the program monitor on the right so you can see things more clearly. And if you go up to this little icon here, it shows you all the different workspaces that are available. And right now we're in the vertical workspace. So I have a finished vlog here already edited. You can see it's already all put together here. Now, how do you create this timeline in the first place before you add footage to it? You can go down here into your project panel and there's a little icon here that looks like a little flipping page. Just click on that to create a new item and you're going to create a sequence. A sequence is essentially just your timeline. So you can see there's different presets to work with. If you're editing vertical video, you can just use social and you can see there is a social media portrait or vertical preset, which is nine by 16. And the default is 30 frames per second. If you want to edit in a different frame rate, no worries. You can select this, then go to settings and you can change it to any of these frame rates that you want. I'm going to keep mine at 30 frames per second. In my case, I'm going to be using 1080 by 1920 because I want to have more resolution to work with because some of the videos I shot were in 4K. So that way I can scale it up or scale it down and I have more flexibility. So let's go ahead and give it a name and call it demo. Let's press OK. So this is our empty sequence. If you accidentally close it off, don't worry, it didn't disappear. Just double click on it and it's opened again. So I'm gonna drag and drop my first clip into my sequence here. And you're gonna get a warning if you shot your footage in a different resolution than your sequence. So I wanna actually keep this because I wanna be able to have more resolution to work with and I don't want it to change my sequence to 2K, right? I wanna keep it in HD. So what you can do here to resize this is go to the properties panel and they now have this fit. So now you can see it's actually the full frame in here. But if you ever want to resize it at all, you can always use these scale and reposition controls if you want to scale it in. I'm just going to press Command Z to undo that at any time. Now there might be some cases where you shot something in landscape or you shot something on a camera that you were trying to shoot vertical, but it still imports in a landscape format. Let me show you what I mean here. For example, if I go down here, I was filming some tennis when I was at the Italian Open and I wanted to shoot it vertically, but it still displays in landscape from my Canon EOS R. You can see that unfortunately, it doesn't rotate automatically. So you might think that by going to the properties panel and clicking fit, will do the job, but no, all this does is scale this down to 56%, which we don't want. So let's undo that. And actually all we wanna do is rotate this 90 degrees. And now it fits perfectly because essentially it's HD just rotated around. So that's how you deal with that type of clip. But you might also have footage that you shot in landscape. And in that case, you'll just select it and properties panel and click on fill to frame not fit. So that's how you can resize your clips. Before I show you how to do split screens, let me show you how to do some basic cuts. So here I have this clip where I'm in, you know, my house clothes and I want to jump into my outfit for the day. And so what I need to do is like scroll to my best take here. I did a few. I think this was my best take and I jump up and then when I land, I'm in my new outfit trying to be a TikToker here. Let's go ahead and let's Make our first cut here, just press C to do the razor tool and then press V to go back to the selection tool and you can select this clip here and press Option or Alt if you're on a PC, Alt Delete and that ripple deletes it back. So that's the beginning of our clip here. So then I play. Here's my outfit for the day for the Italian Open. So then when I jump up at this moment, I want to make another cut, press C and cut. And now I need to scrub all the way to the end where I'm in my final outfit and I jump up right about here. Let's say this take is fine. And then just like before, select this and press option or alt delete to roll it together. 
So now it looks like this. For the Italian Open. There we go. All right, so let's go into the actual vlog edit that I have here and let's talk about some of the effects that I did. One is the split screen effect. So if I wanna stack these on top of each other, I can just select this one and move it on top and just drag out the other clip. So now I have two planes simultaneously, but I need to create a split screen to reveal the clip beneath. So what I'm gonna do is select this first one, go to the properties panel and reposition this up like so. Now you'll notice that I have these rulers on my program monitor. If you don't see that on yours, first of all, you need to select the program monitor, then go to view, and then you need to show rulers and show guides. You also need to make sure you control click on the ruler and make sure it's set to percent. So I'm gonna select up here, click and drag down to exactly 50%. So now we have this guide saying, that's right in the middle. So now with this top layer selected, I can go over to the properties panel and on the bottom, I can just use the crop control to basically crop it at exactly 50. You can always zoom in for precision and you can use this tool down here to go to the crop. That way you can actually physically drag the crop here like so, so it's more precise. And the last thing I wanna do is on the bottom clip, I want to reposition this down slightly. So now we have two clips playing at the same time. That's a split screen. So one of the most important rules of YouTube is if they don't click it, they don't watch it. But coming up with successful YouTube video ideas each week can be overwhelming and stressful. Last fall, I started using a new tool called Spotter Studio to help me develop winning thumbnails and tiles for my video. And it helped me so much that I've partnered with them and they're now the sponsor of this video. If you're ever drawing a blank, which happens to me all the time, I can browse Spotter Studio's AI generated thumbnails and titles they've produced for me based on actual YouTube data that shows what my audience likes. How cool is that? But if you do have an idea, you can type it in and Spotter Studio will help you workshop a title, thumbnail, and hook. Let's start with a thumbnail. And after the initial results, you can further refine the thumbnail using these different tools until you get the thumbnail that you want. And then I can send these concepts to my thumbnail designer to speed up the process. So how is this valuable? Because I can see the title in the thumbnail first, it helps me validate the video idea before I invest time and money in production. And lastly, but certainly not least, Outliers is my favorite feature. It reveals what videos connect with my audience so that way I can bring brainstorm ideas related to these outliers. Right now you can get your first year for only $99. That's over 80% off, but only for a limited time. You can use my link below to sign up for the seven day free trial before you decide to commit. Thanks so much to Spotter Studio for sponsoring this video. And now let's show you some more vertical video tips. What about creating titles in Premiere Pro? I'm gonna give you an example from another part of another vlog I did from my other Euro trip to Monaco with my friend, we had this really cool idea for an opening shot of us walking past some text, kind of like uh, the Emily in Paris. You can go ahead and select this little icon called the type tool, and you can go ahead and click anywhere on the program monitor. And I'm just gonna type Monaco, click again and type in vlog. We can do the center alignment and we can align it in the center. And then you can also use the position controls to bring it more down, for example. And let's do the same thing with the vlog layer. So now this text layer, I can make it last the entire time of the video just by dragging it out. You can drag out text layers as long as you need it to. So we have the text here, but we don't walk in front of it. We need to do a rotoscoping. So how do we do a rotoscope? Well, first of all, we need to duplicate our video because we need to have a copy of us walking across on top of the text. So we need to press Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and drag and drop to duplicate it above. So now we can just cut the part that we need to roto. So right here we can press C and make our cut and then the part when I walk across frame. We don't need to take the full clip. So make another cut here. So now it's just the part that we need to roto, which is this section. Control click on it or right click with your mouse and replace with After Effects composition. So this is gonna automatically open up After Effects. So to rotoscope, you're going to double click on the clip and open it up in the layers panel here. 
Then we're going to go to the Roto Brush tool. And you're going to select the subject just by clicking and dragging this green outline. And it will start to automatically uh, select your subject. If you need to zoom in, you can use the magnifying tool or use your mouse pad like I am just to zoom in quickly, then press H to the hand tool to reposition it. Then go back to the rotor brush tool and to deselect portions, press option to get the red brush and then you can deselect the parts that don't need to be selected. Now down here, I don't have to be as accurate, right? Because this part is not being interrupted by the text. So I don't have to be a perfectionist here, but I wanna make sure that her hat is selected. And then we also need to make sure that I'm selected as well. And then press the space bar to play this through. And it uses AI to basically detect the edges. So it does a really good job. See that pink outline? It's doing a good job here. So once that's done, you wanna freeze the roto. So freezing just locks the roto in place so that way it performs faster in Premiere Pro. Now we can go back to Premiere Pro and look at this. Now you can see that we walk in front of it because this part is our After Effects composition. So that's how you can have more control with your Roto by using Premiere Pro with the Replace with After Effects composition. And I know that several of you probably wanna do these types of effects. So Premiere Pro comes with limited built-in transitions. If you go over to the Effects panel and you just search Transitions, built into Premiere Pro is the Dissolve Transitions. There's some Iris Transitions, Page Peels, Barn Door, and wipes. So for example, if I drag this wipe transition between these two clips, you'll get a basic wipe. But if you want to have more amazing transitions to choose from that come with previews, I actually developed my own toolkit called the Gal Toolkit Extension, which you can install and have access to over 300 different transitions, plus thousands of other effects. Film Burn is some of my favorites. So let's go ahead and let's use one of our scratch transitions here. Let's double click to apply it at that cut point. And after you do that, it'll just automatically apply to your timeline. So just let it do its thing. And here we go. And it comes with a sound effect. So let's play this back now. Beautiful little film burn. So now what about captions? You may have noticed that I have a layer inside of my finished vlog here called Brevity Captions. And that's because I use a plugin called Brevity to create animating captions that look like this. Some might say that hitting a fluffy yellow ball across a net is simple and quite boring. Now you can see it has this little animation and it changes the color like a karaoke style. Now to have to do that manually would take a lot of time. Now Brevity is a plugin and it does cost a significant amount of money for people that are maybe doing this on the side for fun. But if you're producing a lot of videos and it's your job, then maybe paying for a subscription makes sense. If you want to learn how to use Brevity, you can watch this video. I'll put a thumbnail here and I'll put a link down in my description so you can get a full tutorial on how to use it. But what I'm going to do is show you the free way and static captions are still fine. So I'm just going to basically turn off this layer and let's go to our text panel. Now you can see here it's already automatically transcribed my sequence for me. And so you can go through, you can go in and you can double click to edit any of the text here like a Word document, which is great. So how do you turn this transcript into captions? Just click on CC and then here you can choose your captioning preferences. In this case, you can choose an existing style. In this case, you may have none, but I'll show you how to stylize it in a moment. And then with characters, this determines how long you want it to be. For vertical video, I recommend around 20. I think that that's good. So that way it doesn't get cut off by the software's UI with the likes and everything on the right and the bottom. And then seconds, minimum duration, you can adjust this. Just by playing with it, you can just leave it at three. I think that's fine. And then this is what I like to do is change it from double to single because I don't want two lines of text. And then you just click create. So now you can see we have our captioning layer or the subtitle layer right up here with all of our captions in this green, all divided up based on what was set. But it's here all the way at the bottom of the frame. We need to stylize it. So we can select one of these layers here and go to 
the properties panel. And then from here, you can choose a new style and reposition it. So let's go ahead and let's change this to a more bold font. Let's do Montserrat bold, and then we can reposition it up in frame. You can also choose a zone. So you can choose the center, which is nice. And you can also bring this down slightly. So I like to have my captions right around here. So that way it doesn't you know, get too much inside of the main part of the video. And then I can choose to have a background if I want to, which I usually prefer to do. So that way it's easier to read and make sure that the opacity is up. If you want it to be fully solid, you can add some padding and some roundness. And I think that looks pretty good. So then you might be like, well, it's not carrying over to the other ones. So all you need to do is create a new style. And we can just call this demo in this case, and you can save it to your project and local styles. So that way it'll appear in your local styles here that you can use in the future. So now all the other captions have this style to it. Here's my outfit for the day for the Italian Open. So it doesn't have that animation, but because I made the character length 20, it does have a little bit of movement because the words are moving. So this works completely fine, right? You don't need to have the animating captions if you don't feel like you need to purchase a subscription, right? Once your captions are done and your video is done, you might be like, okay, but how do I export my video? What you're gonna do is go up to this export tab. And here there's a lot going on. But when you're exporting for Instagram or YouTube Shorts or TikTok, it's actually pretty simple. Just choose the preset match source adaptive high bitrate. And then you can give your project a name and you can choose um, a location to save it to. So then you're just gonna click export and that's it. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't cover here in terms of sound design, but I have videos already on that. So you can click over here to go learn how to mix sound inside of Premiere Pro to help bring your reels and shorts to life. That's all for this video. If you want more videos like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time, bye. Mm -hmm.